Hi and welcome to Module 9, Metrics and Measures of the Agile Operations Fundamentals course. And in this module we're going to talk about what are the best metrics for an operations team and what are the key factors that you have to keep in mind when measuring for continuous improvement. It is very important to make sure that your measures are balanced. Using a balanced scorecard is quite a nice way to go about this because it has the four various aspects. You have the financial aspect, the people aspect, the process aspect, and the customer aspect. And using these four aspects, you could fill in the various key metrics that suit your team. For example, on the financial side, you could go for unit cost per transaction, which is very important to number, but you could also record the total cost of the whole operations itself. Uh, you could then look at the customer side and you could look at customer satisfaction or the number of defects, a quality metric. And normally, sometimes you have these specified in your service level agreements and you could extract them from there. Don't go for too many of them, just pick out the key ones from the service level agreement. On the process side, the two key metrics are throughput and cycle time, but you could also go for lead time to start. So this is the time that a request waits before you actually start processing it and the size of the backlog. So if you've got a very big backlog, that may be something you want to measure as well. On the people aspect, you would want to measure the team morale or the team temperature or the team satisfaction, as you call it. But you may also want to measure the attrition rate and the skills gap to make sure that the various aspects are there. So the important message here is to balance your metrics. The six golden metrics that uh, I always recommend to an operations team are a quality metric, depending on what you're delivering, customer satisfaction, throughput, unit cost, cycle time and team satisfaction. Now you can see that there will be a very good play between the two, team satisfaction and customer satisfaction. There'd be a tension between that, there'd be a good healthy tension between cycle time and throughput, and often a good healthy tension between quality and unit cost. The important thing to remember is balance your metrics, make sure you have some behavior metrics, some outcome metrics, which could be financial or deadline based or service level agreement based, but you also measure your process. Now, most operations teams are driven by budgets and are driven by financial numbers and they forget management information. Here we're talking about management information that helps you make better decisions. Finally, remember it's all about trends. It's not the number by itself. While that does tell you something, it doesn't really tell you the whole picture. You want to see is customer satisfaction improving? Is throughput going up? You want throughput to get better. You want the team satisfaction to improve. You want the cycle time to reduce or you want the unit cost to reduce. It's when you plot these over time, this could be a week, a month or a quarter, you would actually notice improvement or a fallback. Another tip to remember is to avoid vanity metrics. These are metrics that make you feel good, but are not really linked to the outcome that you're trying to drive. So for example, if you measure the number of page views on your website, yes, it may be getting better, but it doesn't mean that they're actually converting it to sales and your revenue may still be flat. So make sure that the metrics you have are really driving the goals and objectives and are linked to the goals and objectives. If they're not, they could be just vanity metrics. Metrics must be up to date. It is vital that these metrics are kept up to date on a daily or a weekly basis and they are consistent in the way you measure them. So if, for example, you measure the throughput in a certain way or the unit cost in a certain way, then make sure you measure it always in that particular way. It doesn't matter. Don't try and get in right down to the last cent, for example, in unit cost calculation and bring in the financial people, etc. Just take the total approximate cost of the department and divide it by the number of transactions. Keep the metrics simple. You want maybe six to eight. You don't want more than that. You want them simple and you want them powerfully focused on your goals. And lastly, they must be visible. Make big visual charts of these key metrics, put them up on the walls, or use little thermometer drawings or anything you want and let the teams find a way 
to make these metrics visible on a daily basis. Lastly, metrics require discipline. It is a very disciplined approach to continuous improvement. And without these metrics, you will not know whether you are improving or whether you're taking a step backwards. Discipline is the difference between good and great. I wish you all the best on your journey and keep measuring. Thank you.